Svelte gives us a number of different ways to create components. In this video, I want to show you a way that was recently introduced to me by my friend Adrian, which has completely changed the way that I'm going to be building components moving forward. So let's first take a look at how one might create a card component in Svelte. You may have a card, which consists of the wrapper or the container for the card itself. We might have a card title, which would just be like an H tag and some predefined styles. We may have a description, which is typically a P tag or a span tag with its own styles, and then a button, which can consist of some actions or whatever else that you wanted on this card, right? The idea here is that we have these three different components that we're importing, or four different components really that we're importing, and then using them all inside of our app.svelte or page.svelte file. We can have as many titles, descriptions, or buttons as we want. And there isn't really a problem here, right? From a functionality perspective, this works just as you might expect, right? But we can do better. So since the card title, card description, and card button were specifically designed to be used inside of the card component here, this card wrapper, and they really shouldn't be used outside of it, we can actually move all of these import statements here from this app.svelte or page.svelte into the card.svelte, like so. And now what we can do is we can actually pass these components as props to the slot. So let me just remove card from each one of these. And I'm just gonna say title, description, and button here. And then inside of our card component here, or inside of our page.svelte where we're using the card component, we can say let title, let description, and let button. And then I'm just gonna remove card from each one of these. And as you can see, the component functions the exact same way. So that was pretty awesome. When I first saw it, I was kind of mind blown that I hadn't seen this done before. Uh, it's not like a new feature or anything. I definitely think the scoping of the let keyword here definitely helps because there were some issues where it would go outside of its you know, scope. But now it, this is a perfect use case for this. And let's say we had like 20 different children components, not that you should, but let's say we had like five to 10. This would be kind of a lot to have. What we can do is we can do it one of two ways. We can define an object here. So we'll say const C, we'll have just a title, description, and button. And we're using those components as you know the property name and the value is going to be that component. And then we can just use the spread operator here to pass all of those into the card. And as you can see, it still works the same exact way. But if you have you know, five or more or four or more to where it starts to get cluttered up over here, we could actually just pass C to our slot. And then on this side, we'll just say let C, and then we'll have a C dot title. And I'm, I'm saying C in this case stands for children. You can't use the keyword card. Um, at least I couldn't in my experimenting due to the fact that it conflicts with this, I believe, of course, and the import that we have here. Uh, but C works fine uh, or whatever else you'd wanna call this. I um, mean, you do get type hints too, which which is super awesome. So you can actually do C dot and it'll show you title, description, and button. So you know all the children components that you have for this card. And as you can see, by changing this up, it works just as it would normally. We could have multiple buttons. Each of them can be their own unique things. We can have disabled equals true here. And now we have a disabled button and then a non-disabled button. So I think this is a pretty awesome way to create components and I hope you do as well. I wanted to make this quick video today to show it to you all. I know I haven't made a video in a little over a month and that's because I've been really busy working on a new headless UI library for Svelte along with some others called Melt UI. It's still in its early stages, but I think it's going to be the de facto headless UI library for Svelte and we're putting a lot of effort and energy into really making the developer experience top notch and to adding those components that we as Svelte developers have been missing for quite some time. At least from an accessibility perspective. So I'll leave a link in the description down below. It's definitely still in its early stages. So don't expect some production ready library yet, but if you want to start messing around with it and seeing what we're up to, you can check it out down below. I'm also going to be refactoring Shad C and Silt to use that approach with the next big overhaul that is currently in the work. So thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you for subscribing and liking and watching my videos. It means a ton to me and I will see you in the next one.